All right, welcome back. Third installment. Let's do some iSCSI here today. We're going to connect a RBD block volume, the one we created last time, to an iSCSI target and patch it out to my Windows machine here. Okay. Uh, I've already gone ahead and uh, booted up all the Ceph VMs. Uh, by the way, this is an overdub. The original audio did not work out for this. So I just want to let you guys know that. I'm not writing a script for this either. I'm just going to go with it. Showing you that I've added a second network card to the bovine PC and I bridged that out to my desktop here. Uh, we don't want it on an isolated network. See that we have a iSCSI uh, target already existing. This is my personal iSCSI stuff that's games and stuff. We're going to go ahead and show you our current drives just to see what's going on. And let us kick on the Bova NPC. And I've already done a couple of really small things uh, ahead of time on this guy. Um, what I've done is there is a file called RBD map inside of ETC Ceph, which I'm going to show you in a second. And I, what I've done is I've already added the bovines test um, mapping into that so that the block device is logged in automatically every time the computer starts. So this is what it looks like. It's just RBD forward slash bovines test specifies the client's name which is the one we specified when we created it and then the keyring file which is essentially a password right so um looking into that let's go ahead and look at what the old one looks like so that we can do a, or the, not the old but the original file just so you can see what it looks like when uh, you look at it it'll just look like that so i just modified that second line to reflect mine and that that's all we did Right, and I've set up a second network card, like I said earlier, and I've already IP'd that. Right, the way the uh, the Ceph setup script creates a uh, IP or, or an ETH zero config file, I just copied that over, made it renamed it F one, and then changed all the F zeros to F ones, and then modified the IP. So you see, it's ten oh oh two five two five three. My desktop is ten oh oh two five four. Um, so we're going to add the portal of 10.0.0.2.5.3 to my iSCSI target. And it's going to time out. It's not going to work because we haven't done any iSCSI stuff yet. But we will. Uh, this is going to be a nice short video for you. Running approximately 11 minutes. Um, uh, got a little error there. So that's the existing one. And let's go ahead and get started, right? App get install. You really need this part, this no install recommends. And uh, the reason is, well, it tries to install about a gig of stuff. So target CLI and, and Python. Um, Irvid. I don't know what the hell that is, but apparently it's needed. Installs relatively quickly. And and now we can basically get started. Uh, running target CLI. It creates our config files for us automatically. See it right there. Everything's clear. We just installed it. Uh, and now we're going to go through it you know, step by step. First, you create a backstore, right? I block create. We're going to have to specify a device name and then an actual like name name. So in our case, I had forgotten the uh, name of the device here. So I'm just going to look it up real quick. RBD and then RBD again. And I accidentally catted it, so we're going to have to break out of that and list it. But you can see the IOPS running in the background there. So that's that's the uh, iBlock 
target we're going to create. So when we go back to target CLI, you'll see that it kind of picks up right where you left off. And it's right there in the iBlock. So we're just going to create device equals slash dev slash RBD slash RBD. And then finally bovine test. You can tab complete inside this, uh, or you can't in this part, but the commands within uh, target CLI can be tab completed, right? So if you start to type CR and hit tab, it'll it'll finish it. So there we go. We created our um, backing block device. Now we're going to create our uh, portal. We're going to actually create the portal. I mean, we just type create. There you go. Unless you have a specific name or something you want to name it, it'll, it'll automatically do that. It creates the target. Um, you go into the first target. That's, uh... All right. We're going to turn off chap, all right? We're going to turn off... Ch chap is now off. So it's just a plain old, um, the ACL is now controlled entirely by IQN login. And chap sucks, right? I mean, that's basically what it comes down to. It's nice with VMware when you have like a bunch of VMware, you know, machines and you want them all to log in without having to pick up all their IQNs. You use chap, you just, you know, same name and password. Everybody logs in. All right, so that loan is created. And go to portal here. Now we're actually, in reality, we're creating the portal. Uh, that one was just a target that we created earlier. This is creating a portal. We're going to create it on the external facing IP so that I can log into it on my Windows machine. We're going to add the IQN number of my Windows computer to this guy. Let's go look at the configuration, and there it is right there. Pretty simple. IQN 1991-05-micom Microsoft colon Wintendo. Yes, my computer is a Wintendo. I usually only use it to play games, but it Seems to be a good platform for making these videos as well. And you save the config. That should be all she wrote. That, that's all it takes to get a um, block device on through LIO. Um, once we refresh here, we should see it there. I'm just going to do a quick test and like format the disk and stuff. But th that's it. That's all she wrote. I mean, very simple setup. And the, like I said, the RBD should map automatically when the system starts. Um, we might have to set up some dependencies so that, you know, target, LIO target is, is started after um, the disk creation. Here I do a little bit of a screw up here. I accidentally pick my QLogic iSCSI adapter. That's how my normal iSCSI logs in. It won't let me do it here obviously because it is a direct connection uh, from one from the iSCSI card to the the div storage device, right? So it's, yeah, not going to work. So I, I'm going to connect through my normal Ethernet uh, it's bridged, so it's it'll go whatever speed. Uh, whenever you do iSCSI uh, Microsoft iSCSI Initiator, you should set up these boxes correctly. It actually will make it go faster, believe it or not. Um, so now I'm logged in. I should have access to the disk there. All right, the GPT. Now, in the few right now, even as we speak, um, the 
Ceph people, or at least one of the devs at least, is creating an LIO module wherein it kind of communicates directly to Ceph. You don't like map the RBDs. It can it will use like you know the you know lib RBD or whatever in the background and connect to the you know these things automatically. And I believe the intent is to preserve reservations across systems so you could set up like high availability and and um, multi-pathing and such like that so you can actually have multi-path of, of very very nice setup using LIO should be really advanced stuff when it gets out I, I haven't seen it I've just heard about it I'm going to look into it in more detail Th that would be really helpful okay so so the disk is formatted there it is, and that's all she wrote, guys. Um, if anybody has any questions about how to set up Ceph to do different things, if you want, I think I'm going to do Ceph FF, Ceph FS next. That's pretty much all you need to do.